Hey everyone, it's Kelly here again with a quick review of Firesteel.com's Ferro Rod products. Uh, Firesteel.com is a website devoted entirely to ferro rod and tinder sales. Now they got all sorts of unique products, but none that really get over complicated. It's mostly just naked rods, uh, some with handles, a lot without. No fancy spin strikers, no plungers, no spring loaded doohickeys, and no brands other than Firesteel.com stuff. I think I bought better than 20 rods from these guys, and all are consistently smooth with no horizontal rippling found on some of the other brands, and they seem like they strike easier than most. Uh, the rods came in all sizes, the rods they have come in all sizes, uh, from the $1 mini all the way up to the ridiculous $150 magnum, but the typical sizes used range from about 4 to 15 bucks. Uh, a great deal uh, for a simple no-nonsense rod. If you want a dedicated striker, you can have one for about two bucks and it works great, but it could be made even better with a chisel edge ground into one side. Now I teach kids to use these things at a local elementary school and they can't get a good peel off the rod unless I customize a scraper for them. An adult probably wouldn't face as much of a problem. Rods with handles start around twelve bucks and a tube can be had starting around twenty. Now they got quite a range of original products including an ingenious little toggle rod that can replace a button on a piece of gear for fire starting capabilities from a fastener. I mean how cool is that? Now when I teach kids how to use a ferro rod, they struggle with anything smaller than the ranger size. So stick with this size or get a bigger one uh, if you plan on a naked rod. Now the Armageddon is far and away their best product with an outstanding handle that's no gimmick. I mean it's just great. My experience with the tube, however, was kind of mixed. I mean, the concept is neat, but its cost, mass, weight, and separate parts offer a distinct disadvantage to the cheaper and easier to use Armageddon. Additionally, my $30 unit came with several light dings and scratches in the metal of the tube. That's not a big deal, but at 30 bucks, it's kind of a downer. Uh, the big letdown was the compass, though. I mean, my unit works perfectly, but it was inlaid into the tube crooked and came with glue kind of plastered on the top. You know, again, this is a flagship $30 product, and the fit and finish probably should have been better for that cost. The tube is cool, it works fine, but stick with the lower cost Armageddon Fire Steel for your main rod. It's an awesome product, it's a great product. Now, I bought dozens of ferro rods from various sources over the years, but firesteel.com is hands down the best place to go. Uh, go and check them out. Okay, real quick here. These are some products from firesteel.com. Firesteel.com is, is one of many companies that sells blank ferrocene rods. I like them a lot because they have good prices and a lot of different uh, options for you to choose. Uh, this is called, I think it's called the Armageddon. This is one of the better ones. If you're thinking about buying one of these, do yourself a favor and get one with a handle on it, some kind of handle, because they're very hard to use with just plain naked rod. You can do it, but it takes a lot more uh, finesse and uh, it's not it's not nearly as easy so get one with a handle uh, this one's between 10 and 15 bucks I forget and it comes with a scraper uh, the scrapers that come with uh, firesteel.com's I think they're called super scrapers they cost around two dollars uh, they're very very good but not as good as they could be so Ron Fontaine runs the show there at firesteel.com Ron if you ever run into this video you would do well to put a chisel edge uh, chisel grind on the on the one side of your super scraper and get get a, a sharp edge on it uh, that really, really helps in peeling off metal, peeling off sparks. Uh, so they're, they work good as they come, but they could be a lot better with a chisel grind on the one side. So that's something to consider. This is an outstanding product. This is the second one I have. You can see it's been used quite a bit. Uh, they have all sorts of different sizes. This is the tiniest one they have is the Fire Steel Mini. I think it costs around a dollar. You can actually slide this in a shoe or a hat so you have a redundant, you have redundant option. You can hear my chickens over there. <laughs> For redundancy, so that if you do if you do lose your um, your the metal mat you're carrying with you, you have another one tucked in your hat or your shoe or your pocket wallet, whatever, somewhere it's tiny enough where you can put it in anywhere. This is the tube. This is like their flagship uh, fire steel. Uh, it's around thirty dollars. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't buy it for a couple reasons. One, it doesn't really offer any advantage over top of the uh, Armageddon right here with the handle. Uh, because you don't really need to protect this alloy. Uh, it will oxidize, but so what? 
uh, it's going to get scraped and beat up anyway when you use it, so that doesn't really matter. The bulk, the bulk is a concern. It's big. Here, let me put this down and show it to you how it works. It's bulky. It doesn't offer any significant advantage. There's actual moving parts. This could potentially get lost. It makes a good handle when you want to use it. Uh, it throws sparks just fine, but there again, it doesn't really offer any significant advantage. Also, I was a little disappointed. Uh, there was nicks and dings on the tube when I got it, and when I pay 30 bucks for a product, I kind of expect it to come in new condition. Uh, that's just a little bit of a complaint, but the other complaint's a little more serious. This compass in the top, it's a button compass. It works, and it works well. The problem is it's put, on, on, put in on an angle. When somebody sat it in there, it was sat in on an angle, and it's got glue all over the top. You know, somebody really slapped it in there and didn't really take a lot of time and care to, to stick it in so that it was flat and even and also got glue schmutzed on it which okay it, it still works it works fine but there again $30 product not really put together to the uh, to the level that I would expect it to for the cost so you know for the price that you're looking at here and this is readily available for about half I would definitely go with this I would not spend my money on this again if I uh, if I had the uh, if I had it to do over again. That's not a necessarily a cut on the product as much as it is a cut on the usefulness of the engineering of the product. It's just not, uh, just doesn't offer any viable advantage over top of a naked rod. So yeah, take it early. Oh, one more thing before I go. Another thing they say is you can actually take uh, tinder and stick it in the tube. That's not really true. You can see the, you can see the actual ferro rod takes up 90% of the, the space in there. And I'm not quite sure how you'd get the tinder out of the tube once you actually mash it in, you know, with, with the actual ferrocene rod after you screw it in. So that's not really a good option either. But there I'm, so you got goods and bads from firesteel.com. Uh, their products are good. They're reasonably affordable. Uh, but I would just stick with the naked rods with the handle uh, rather than the tubes.